Welcome to Present Poetry. I'm your host, Erin Crittenden, and all poems within this podcast are either public domain or are used with permission from the author or the author's estate. It's a fun time for poetry lovers of all ages, so sit back, relax, and get ready to hear some poems of the past and the present. This week's featured poet is Rainer Maria Rilke. Rene Carl Wilhelm Johann Josef Maria Rilke was born on December 4, 1875, in Prague, which was the capital of Bohemia then, but is now part of the Czech Republic. Rilke's childhood was often influenced by his mother's grief over the loss of his sister, and she would often dress him in fine clothes and treat him as a girl. However, that ended in 1884 with his parents' divorce, and in 1886, he was enrolled in a military academy. He attended the military academy until an illness forced him out in 1891, when he then enrolled in a trade school. However, he was expelled in 1892. After getting expelled, he took his writing seriously and published Life and Songs, his first poetry collection, in 1894. That was quickly followed by a second collection, published in 1895. However, in 1895, Rilke passed his entrance exams and attended university in Prague, where he studied literature, art history, and philosophy. He graduated in 1896 and moved to Munich, where he met and fell in love with Lou Andrea Salome. He changed his name from René to Rainier at her bidding, and they continued a relationship until 1900. However, she remained a close friend and confidant of Rainier's until his passing. Later in 1900, Rainier met sculptor Clara Westhoff, who he eventually married and had a daughter with. By then, he had some acclaim for his writings and was known as one of Germany's most intense lyrical poets. That inspired Rainier to begin one of his most ambitious projects in 1912. It is called the Duino Elegies, and he began writing it while living as a guest in the Duino Castle. Depression, the war, and other roadblocks kept him from finishing it until 1922. However, once he published it, it quickly gained a reputation for being one of his most important works. Rainier passed away on December 29, 1926, of leukemia. However, before he died, Rainier chose a poem as his epitaph, and it is now inscribed on his gravestone. It reads, Rose, O pure contradiction, desire, to be no one's sleep beneath so many lids. We are reading from a collection of poems that was published in 1918 and translated by Jesse Lamont. This poem is called Solitude. Solitude is like a rain that from the sea at dusk begins to rise. It floats remote across the far-off plain, upward into its dwelling place, the skies. Then o'er the town it slowly sinks again, like rain it softly falls at that dim hour, when ghostly lanes turn toward the shadowy morn, when bodies weighed with sodiate passion's power Sad, disappointed from each other turn, When men with quiet hatred burning deep Together in a common bed must sleep Through the gray, phantom shadows of the dawn, Lo, solitude floats down the river wan. This poem is called Song of the Statue. Who so loveth me that he will give his precious life for me? I shall be set free from the stone. If someone drowns for me in the sea, I shall have life, life of my own, for life I ache. I long for the singing blood. The stone is so still and cold. I dream of life. Life is good. Will no one love me and be bold? and me awake. I weep and weep alone, weep always for my stone. What joy is my blood to me, if it ripens like red wine? It cannot call back from the sea the life that was given for mine, 
given for love's sake. This poem is called The Poet. You hour, from me you ever take your flight. Your swift wings wound me as they were along. Without you, void would be my day and night. Without you, I'll not capture my great song. I have no earthly spot where I can live. I have no love. I have no household fane. And all the things to which myself I give impoverish me with richness they attain. This poem is called The Panther. His weary glance from passing by the bars has grown into a dazed and vacant stare. It seems to him there are a thousand bars, and out beyond those bars the empty air. The pad of his strong feet, that ceaseless sound, of supple tread behind the iron bands, is like a dance of strength circling round, while in the circle, stunned, a great will stands. But there are times the pupils of his eyes dilate, the strong limbs stand alert, apart, tense with the flood of visions that arise, only to sink and die within his heart. This poem is called Growing Blind. Among all the others there sat a guest, who sipped her tea as if one apart, and she held her cup not quite like the rest. Once she smiled so, it pierced one's heart. When the group of people arose at last, and laughed and talked in a merry tone, as lingeringly through the rooms they passed, I saw that she followed alone. Tense and still, like one who, to sing, must rise, before a throng on a feastal night, she lifted her head, and her bright glad eyes were like pools which reflected light. She followed on slowly after the last, as though some object must be passed by, and yet, as if it were once but past, she would no longer walk but fly. Thank you for listening to this episode of Present Poetry. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review, share us on social media, or subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you would like to learn more about the featured poet, or you would like your work featured on the podcast, please check out the links in the show notes. Thank you again for listening, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.